If you are watching this video, probably you are already familiar with the FreePVX and also Vampy AI platform. But for those who are not familiar, FreePVX is an open source telephony system. It's actually a GUI on top of an open source telephony system uh, with the name of Asterisk. It's widely used in a lot of telephony systems, both for the normal public systems and also for contact centers. And Vapi is an AI platform that you can uh, create the AI assistance both for incoming and outgoing calls. Actually, you have a lot of features that uh, you can easily create an AI agent, connect, for example, to different platforms and use its capability. It can connect to uh, different models, different speech-to-text and text-to-speech, and it will make your life much more easier when you work with the Vapi platform to create an AI assistant. Uh, and today in this video, I want to teach you how to connect these two platforms together so that, um, for example, uh, when you have a call from your customers to your internal telephony system that today we discuss about the free PBX, then you can route it, for example, to your AI assistant in the Vapi platform and the AI assistant can answer, for example, the call, let's say, as an assistant and or maybe your support or technical department and if it is needed it can transfer back the call to your call center agents and in a way work as one of your employees so what we will discuss today is how to connect these two platforms together via SIP protocol and uh, as you may not be familiar with the VAPI I will do it step by step by creating an very simple assistant in the VAPI, how to log into VAPI, and also what you need to do in the FreePVX system to connect these two platforms together. So the first step is to actually creating an AI assistant using the VAPI platform. Uh, you need to uh, go to the VAPI.ai website and then sign up and log into the platform, of course. In order to create an AI assistant, you need to select assistants create assistant and then here you can choose between a blank template or a ready templates if if this is the first time that you are using the VAPI or if you're not very expert in designing or prompting the AI agents then it's better to select one of the current uh, VAPI AI assistant templates so for example let's say I want to have a customer support specialist so I will choose this one I will create assistant and it will automatically create this AI assistant for me here then you can learn and work with your, your AI assistant and for example uh, get familiar with the different providers, different models, uh, voices from different providers that you can use here, transcriber that you can choose or even connect it to the uh, different tools like sending SMS or email. This video is not for you to actually create a professional AI assistant. There are a lot that you need to learn on uh, designing and creating a production ready uh, AI assistant and in this video we will focus more on the connection of your free public system your telephone system to the uh, VAPI AI assistant so that when for example let's say here I have a uh, assistant uh, a support a specialist and when a customer calls my uh, free public system my telephone system you can route it to the uh, VAPI AI agent he will answer the call and if needed he can transfer the call back to the for example one of your call center agents so and now that we have our assistant you can easily actually test it by talk to the assistant hi there this is alex from tech solutions customer support how can i help you today thanks alex this is just for the testing you're welcome it's alex actually if there's anything specific you'd like to to test or as you see, the, the, the agent is ready, at least for our lab. Uh, so let's go to the connection part, how we can connect this VAPI agent to our FreePVX. In order to do that, I just created the uh, FreePVX. It's a fresh install on DigitalOcean. It, it can be anywhere. Just uh, in this setup, I use a FreePVX that has public IP address. So I don't set a lot of settings for the NAT uh, problem. If your prefix is in your on-premise, then you need to take care of the, VAP, the NAT settings. Um, in order to do that, of course, first uh, we want to create a SIP trunk between these two. So let's start with the VAPI 
uh, platform. You need to go to the phone numbers. You need to select create phone number. Select free VAPI SIP. Give it a SIP identifier. Let's name it, for example, VAPI or my VAPI free PBX. This should be unique. So maybe someone is using a VAPI free PBX. I think I'm using myself, so you can't use that. Then uh, choose a label, S give it a username. The username should be at least uh, 20 characters. So just uh, let's use, for example, VAPI free PBX username, VAPI free PBX. I'm not sure if it is 20 or not, but I think it's, it is. Then generate a secure password. It should be at least 20 characters as well. I just generated and I copy here and then import CPURI. If everything is fine, then you can see your uh, my free PBX here. Of course, you can see it still here. You need to refresh your page. And after refreshing, you can see, okay, my VAPI free PBX uh, system is here. Don't forget to uh, save your username and password. I just forgot it. I just wanted to show you as well. So let's remove it because if you forget your username and password, you don't have it and you can't create it again. So let's create it again. Create a new phone number, free VAPI SIP. Let's name it my VAPI free PBX. Give it the same name, the username, my VAPI free PBX username, and then give it a password. And this time don't forget to save the username and password. So this is my username. And the password that I used, I will save it. And import CPURI. Okay, it's now created, my web 3 pbx and I have my username and password as well. What I want to do here is that in the inbound settings, I want to see if any calls reach this trunk, then send it to the AI assistant of Alex, the one that I just created. So when we send the call from our carrier to the free pbx 3 pbx to the WAPI, WAPI will route it to the uh, actually Alex AI assistant and then save it here. That's it, our VAPI is ready. Let's go to the FreePBX side. We need to go to FreePBX. We need to go to uh, connectivity trunks, add a new PJSIP trunk. Let's give it a name. The trunk name, I give it VAPI. Uh, then we don't need actually to set anything here. I will go to the PJSIP settings. In the general, you need to enter the username and password that you just created. That's why we needed to save that one. So in the username, I will put my username, my VAPI 3 pbx username. Authentication username, you don't need to set. It will follow the username and also the secret that I have created during the creation of the uh, route in the VAPI. And the other settings that we need to set, actually the authentication needs to be outbound because we want to authenticate to the VAPI registration set to none because the VAP, you don't need to register yourself to the VAPI. And uh, language code, the SIP server, the SIP server is actually SIP.VAPI.AI. The port is the default SIP port 5060. If of course here we are using UDP, we can use the actually TLS and the SRTP as well, but first it's better to connect it to the UDP to see how it works. The context, this is for the incoming calls. If you want to manage the incoming calls, we don't support that in this video. We don't cover that in this video, but for example, let's say in case for the next video, we want to send it to from dash VAPI. And the transport, we set it as the 00 UDP. That's okay. Then let's go to the advance. In the advanced settings, what we need to set, the DTMF mode, it should be RFC 4733. That's the, when you enter press one, two, three, that's the only method that uh, VAPI supports. So that's the DTMF method. Send uh, line registration, no, there is no registration needed here. Um, what else do we need to set? Permanent authentication rejection to no, it's all uh, permanent Permanent authentication rejection set to yes. Uh, then qualify is already 60 if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so that's totally fine. 
the contact user the contact user we need to set as our username so that's the contact user let me copy my username again contact user we set as our user then the from domain it should be sip.wapi.ai also from username we need to from user we need to set as username as well so from user and contact user both of them is your username uh, AOR we need to set sip sip.wapi.ai port 5060 match permit we need to set to sip.wapi.ai what does we need to set trust pi yes send pi and rpid to both Inband progress actually to yes, direct media to no, that is already there. Media encryption, we don't have it here, so we need it to set to no, to none. And uh, that's it. So let's submit this trunk. Okay, our trunk is created between the FreePBX and WAPI. And now we need to route the calls to actually WAPI platform. In order to do that, because we need a, a specific uh, pattern, it's easier to do it actually in the uh, SSH, so in the CLI. So in order to do that, let's log into the server, SSH root at 157, 230, 100, 215. Go to CD etc asterisk vim. You need to create a file extensions underline custom.conf. If you are not familiar with the FreePBX or what this extension underline custom is custom.conf is, is that a file that you can um, add some other dial plan to the FreePBX because dial plan is um, default by default controlled by the FreePBX, but it will give you this. Uh, additional this custom file so that you can add your own dial plan and that's what we want to do here so I will open this one and let's uh, okay I already have something here we can use that one for example here I created a, for the testing I created uh, extension 20001 and one the first option that is used is just uh, prompting something in the CLI, calling WAPI. Then the next thing is that it will dial our trunk. So it will dial PJSIP. WAPI is the name of the trunk that we have created, SIP. And then this is the uh, SIP URI that we created in our WAPI. So for example, here, mine was my FreePBX, my WAPI.FreePBX. So just, I will change this one. You won't see this one because I already prepared this for the lab. I had this dial plan, but you just need to type it. So I will put a TXT document in the uh, video that you can just download it and you will have the same dial plan and you can test that. So what it will do if I call 20001, it will just lock something calling WAPI and then it will send the call to the PJ SIP, our SIP trunk, WAPI, and then to my SIP URI, that, that is my FreePBX, WAPI at SIP.WAPI.AI. And it will ring for 50 seconds. Actually, we don't need because it's immediate answer. And then it will hang up. So let's save it. In order this one to be applied, you need to click, you need to type asterisk R and then dial plan reload. And I have already registered my Zoiper to the system. So I already created the user in FreePBX, so if I go to the application, uh, sorry, connectivity, and then extension, you can see I already have uh, user 1001. So let's give it a try. I 
registered my Zyper 1001 and then let's have the uh, console at the same time as well uh, asterisk dash r so we see what's happening and what I will do I will just call 20001 enter Hi Alex, uh, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, that's great. Uh, going? Yeah, can you Fantastic. tell me about your support, please? It sounds like you might be asking about uh, Tech Solutions products or services. Uh, yes, correct. Thanks. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Goodbye. I'd be happy to help. You're welcome. So that's how the connection between the FreePBX and WAPI agent is done. Uh, in order to see what's going on on the SIP level, I will just show you. So I will just type SNGREP as well, so that you can see a, a normal call SIP flow. F2, F3, and cancel. So as you can see, the invite is sent from our FreePBX to the WAPI. Uh, trying unauthorized and then we authenticate ourselves with the second invite so as you can see with the second invite we have authenticated we send the password and we authenticated ourselves and then we got okay and then the rtp or media is happening that the codec is uh, actually eula and then after that of course i disconnected the call so that's how you uh, connect your free pbx to the wapi agent there are a lot in the wapi agent it's it's quite fun if you work with it of course it's a little uh, hard to not hard it, it needs a lot of uh, tuning so that you can use it for the production but it's one of the easiest method that you can uh, create an AI assistant and because it supports zip you can connect to your telephony system uh, or any other system that supports zip protocol thanks for watching and see you in the next video